Commissioner Zygmuntfeld, Public Works, take it away. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, February Public Works uh, session that's commencing. Um, we have a number of agenda items. The first agenda item, uh, expenditures over 2,500. So item 1A, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Britain Industries in the amount of $9,975 for 500 cubic yards of playground mulch for use at various township parks. There is an attachment. Any questions or concerns, uh, issues from any uh, members of the board? Seeing none. So I'll move this to question, Mr. President. All those in favor say aye. 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 Item 1B, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for turf and equipment supply company in the amount of $6,126.43 for the purchase of a new pond aerator for Curtis Park. Again, there is an attachment. Questions, comments, concerns from members of the board or staff? None. Call to question, Mr. President. All those in favor say aye. 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 Item 1C, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a blanket purchase order for Sherwin Williams in the amount of $5,000 for the purchase of utility markout paint, traffic paint, and supplies as needed. Again, there is an attachment. Questions or concerns from members of the board or staff? Commissioner Rappaport, glad to see your finger up there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just curious how long um, that supply is expected to last. Is that for the year? Uh, yes, Commissioner, that supply is for the year. It's mainly going to be used as needed for utility markout paint. We do have a little bit of traffic paint left over, but in the future, the very near future, we're looking out to uh, start transitioning everything to thermoplastic paint. So we are acquiring numbers from vendors and we may come back with another purchase order next month or in the following few months. So, yeah, and that that was part of my... I guess interest was, uh, so we learned, I think last year that a lot of the traffic calming um, markings are that other, that alternative paint, right? Yeah, thermoplastic paint lasts right. four to seven years, whereas the water-based paint has to be repainted every okay. year, if not more often. So we're trying to transition. It costs a little bit more to get the thermo paint, but it's definitely worth it in the long run. And that's one of the primary uses of it would be for the traffic calming. Yes, definitely. Great. And, uh, Great. Okay. And Thanks very much. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Move to question, Mr. President. All those in favor of this purchase order for the $5,000 for the uh, paint say aye. 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 Item 1D, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a blanket purchase order for Mossy Construction Inc. in the amount of $10,000 for the purchase of concrete used for rebuilding and repairing stormwater inlets and grates as needed. And, and Bo, just to, to pick up on Commissioner Rappaport's question, do we have a similar uh, kind of situation? Is that sufficient for uh, the annual need or that's gonna be determined by the amount of use or demand for that additional concrete? That is going to be determined by the use and demand of that concrete. We're open at $10,000, covers it. Last year, we spent approximately $2,000, but this year with uh, our more, our better staff numbers that we acquired last year, we're hoping to get a lot more of these inlets inspected and repaired. And I would assume that some of those dollars are reflected in the stormwater management fees or reduced, you know, if they're in fact for the purpose of repairing the stormwater inlets and grates, et cetera. Yeah, we're gonna keep a log of everything that was spent and applied to the stormwater management today. Okay. Commissioner Rappaport, I saw your hand. Yeah, and thank you. That was my question, whether those funds come from the enterprise uh, fund, uh, the, the designated stormwater enterprise fund. Okay, good. Any other questions or comments on this item? Call to question, Mr. President. All those in favor of the purchase order for the concrete say aye. 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 Item 1E, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a blanket purchase order for Everlasting Fence Company in the amount of $10,000 for the purchase of fence installation and repair supplies as needed. Uh, I guess 
we'll, we'll be consistent. Uh, same question is that, you know, uh, we don't know what the total budget will be for that, or, or it'll be determined uh, based on the demand and the utilization. Yeah, that will be determined. Uh, we're hoping to get a lot more of the post and rail fence fixed. Uh, Everlasting right now has a pretty decent supply of rails that they're willing to sell to us at cost because they're just trying to look to get rid of them. And we'd like to stock up on all that to use on mainly on Tookany Creek Parkway, but there's areas all over the township that need fence repair. Okay. Any other questions or comments from members of the board? I have a question. Well, comment. Go ahead. Commissioner uh, Brock. Hey, hey, Bo, can you go over, I know you and I met along with Bob, the difference in price, what you're getting at cost as opposed to what we would have paid um, if we didn't? If Bob we, may have the actual numbers. I'm gonna let him take this one because he knows exactly what they are. The uh, the rails that we're getting at cost are $9 a piece. They're 11 foot rails, the standard size. Um, regular price at this time is 14.48, close to $15. So it's a, it's a pretty nice deal. And um, we, as you know, we, we really need to replace a lot of it at this time. Okay. So yeah, I just wanted that. To, thank you. I just wanted that to go on the record to save. Bob, Bob, is that something that they, they'll allow us to purchase a nail store? Or do we have to warehouse it once we make the purchase? We're going to store it because that's part of the deal. I think they want to get it, rid of it out of their yard. But um you know you're down Tookany a lot, and you know that fence really. We want to do it soon, with this special price. I think we really want to do it sooner than later. So uh, I, I hope we can get it done uh, uh, this spring. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, call to question, Mr. President. All those in favor of the ten thousand purchase order for fencing, say aye. 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 Item one F, uh, two pieces, and I see Mr. Stuckert's ready to to defend that purchase. Uh, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve the following purchase orders for Signal Control <laughs> Products, Inc. Uh, bullet one in the amount of $16,045 uh, uh, for new radar components to replace the broken traffic loops at Lime Kiln Pike and Waverly Road. And the second one in the amount of the same amount, $16,045 for new radar components to replace the broken traffic loops at Washington Lane and Church Road. Are there any questions or comments from members of the board on this? Joe, you're in safe turf. Oh, yeah, Commissioner Armand. Yeah, I, I think you'll still be in safe turf, uh, Joe. Uh, can you, um, uh, and I know you've uh, explained this before, but for any new listeners, um, tell us the difference between the traffic loop system and the radar system and why the radar system may be better uh, and why you chose that. Sure, the traffic loop system, uh, Commissioner, is cut into the roadway. So with work being done in the roadway, with uh, utilities coming through, um, with any changes to the roadway surface, uh, things like that, the wires do break. Um, and that's happened quite a bit throughout the township. Um, and the radar actually goes up on the pole. Uh, it is not affected by weather, snow, uh, wind, rain, fog, items like that. Uh, where cameras would be affected by things such as that. And it's uh, a little more expensive uh, than the cameras. It's definitely more expensive than the loops in the road. Uh, however, it does last. It works very well and it's programmable. So if there were changes in traffic for some reason um, in, in detours or long construction project, we could actually adjust uh, the programming of that. Whereas the loops in the road, you cannot. Thank, thank you for that, Joe. And, and this is the this is sort of a trend that when we need to, we've been moving to the radar system uh, yes. for, for various uh, intersections. We've been, right? we've been doing that about four and a half years now. We've been yeah. moving to the radar as they fail. Great. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments from Mr. Stucker? Uh, none being shown, so I'll move to question, Mr. President. All those in favor of the two purchase orders for radar components say aye. Aye. Um, so I, I do have a comment just on these purchase orders and, and ones that are going to accompany with every one of our committee meetings. Things have improved, you know, things improve in these things in modest increments. I, I've noticed that we've added either vendor history 
or vendor payable, which is something I think a couple of us requested and it's helpful. But I, I do have a, a corresponding question and it may be for our, um, for our uh, uh, DOFA or for our tax officer or whatever. Um, the, these expenditures total about $75,000. And I wanted to know if the business privilege tax, which I looked at, at a number of these invoices and didn't see a line item for BPT. So is it either incorporated? I, I don't think so in each invoice. Do we net it out for each payment? Or is there a subsequent bill that's issued to each of the vendors, which seems to me kind of a duplicate effort, but I'm wondering how do we guarantee that we're gonna get that BPT payment from vendors that are doing work specifically in the township for the township. So help me with that one if you can, Allison or whoever else is online. Um, sure, so um, generally speaking, when we do bids and um, RFPs, we have a recommend a requirement that they complete um, the business privilege license so that those vendors are registered with the tax office. Uh, so that gives the, uh, the tax office the, the trigger in order to ensure that they're paying their BPT every year. So do they issue invoices against each of those payments or is it when they have an accumulation of these uh, uh, invoices and payments that uh, then they they send out a, and you still owe us for the business privilege? What I'm looking for is a is an ex, you know kind of an expeditious way of us collecting that money ahead of time rather than incurring things. And again, that was 75,000 I see in Servali we're gonna have an $89,000 plus uh, bill as well payable. I went through their, their invoice and saw nothing to indicate that there was a BPT fee that, that's also incorporated or that's credited against that so that, so that we get that money without having to is issue a separate invoice or do a two-step. So I'm wondering if there's a way that we can do that to improve both our coll collection of those funds and just from an efficiency standpoint. Um, I, I don't, I might have to defer to the tax office or, or maybe the solicitor on this, but my understanding is it's, um, based on your total, uh, revenue for the year or income for the year. And it's, um, split out amongst the different municipalities that have BPTs. Um, so I don't know that we can bill them ahead of time for that. I think that's, um, part of their reporting at the end of the year. And Mitch, we, uh, we try to build into the contracts language that requires them to file a BPT return. <laughs> Ultimately, I don't believe they get an invoice for the BPT. It's on them to um, report uh, what they've made related to township activities and then pay. And there's a procedure on the back end for review um, if, if they don't. But they are required to get a, uh, a business license in the township and we have a contractual obligation with them uh, to file. I was just looking for a way that we could capture that money or prevent it from leaving our coffers at sure. some point. But I appreciate, you know, I appreciate the answer, and I just we can certainly a better um, way to proceed on that. Sure, we I can certainly talk with um, the tax office to see if there's a way to make the process more efficient. I'll make a note to do that. I see Mr. Blue is frowning on that one, so we'll just we'll just not make that more of an issue of that. Um, I'm going to go to uh, item two, which is uh, the receipt of monthly reports and citizen committee meeting minutes. And we have 2A, the January 2023 Highway Department report. There's an attachment. Um, and I'll share one question to, uh, to Mr. Dermer, uh, Kyle. You know, I know you're, you're recently to the department. I saw that there, is, uh, there are specific areas where there is a cameraing for the storm lines. And I'm wondering uh, if there is, in fact, a very specific um, schedule or timetable across the township for all of those storm lines that require cameraing now that we have the vector and the cameras available. Commissioner, there's no specific areas that we're going into right now. Um, they're really just getting a feel for the camera truck right now. Um, but they are, they, I can say they are going to areas where they've had issues in the past and they're trying to find the inlets that we talked about that we're going to be repairing this spring. Okay. And uh, the suggestion here would be that you also become familiar with the, um, the series of projects that were recommended 
by, if you haven't already from uh, Gannett Fleming uh, for all the stormwater management, because those obviously are the first priority areas, along with any significant proposed development where stormwater and flooding issues are being raised either by the township or by the residents. I think it would be a, a good thing and a preventative measure. So just a recommendation from my standpoint, given that that's something that I, I know is a concern for me and a lot of us. So um, any other questions or comments on the highway department report? Uh, uh, Mitch, Mitch, could I take one second? Just, I wanted to introduce Kyle tonight. I was gonna bring it up a little bit later, but you talked to him already. So let's give him a formal introduction okay. to the commissioners. Uh, Kyle came to us in November. He was formerly the public works superintendent at Rockledge Borough and then moved on to Hatborough Borough as director of parks and facilities. Like I said, he came right in the middle of leaf season, did a great job making sure all the leaves got picked up on time. And he's been doing a great job in general. He's a uh, local firefighter. Where at Kyle Rockledge? And Rockledge, Willow Grove, and then I'm part of the Cheltenham Township Water Rescue Task Force. Oh, awesome. So Kyle's got lots of experience and we're happy to have him on board. Well, Kyle, well, just so you know, I didn't single you out. I do this routinely. <laughs> Welcome, Kyle. Yeah. Welcome. That's it. That's as good a welcome as you get from me. <laughs> very, very happy to have you here. Welcome. Absolutely. Welcome. Great. Um, so I'll, I'll move for acceptance of the Highway Department report. All those in favor of accept, accepting the Highway Department report say aye. 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 Item 2B is the December 2022 Refuse and Recycling Department report. Any questions or comments from members of the board? None being seen. Move for that to be approved, Mr. President. All those in favor of accepting that report say aye. 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 Item 2C, January 2023, <clears throat> Parks Maintenance uh, Department report. Um, and on that one, I, I I do have a, I guess, a question on, uh, on the Parks Maintenance report. Um, so Bob D on the uh, took any trail cleanup and that kind of thing. Um, I, I, we've received some questions or concerns from some local residents about the fact that they're, they're wondering if uh, not just beyond blowing the leaves away, but there's some clearance of overgrowth and that kind of thing. Do we have the ability to do that, you know, routinely, or does that require uh, additional crews or additional resources to really go beyond just blowing the leaves away? Bob, you're, uh, you're, you're muted working on that commissioner um, with our increased staff now, which is really nice. Uh, we're able to uh, widen the trail. Uh, we want to add red screenings in a lot of the areas that really need it. And um, again, the, the, the fence work that's going to be done is really going to sharpen up things down there. But uh, we are going through and we're also going to go through the trail on the back side of the creek where there were some issues with uh, down trees and um, to bring that into, because a lot of people use that rear trail too. So uh, we are going to, to take care of anything that's, you know, any obstructions and keep everything safe. And um, the last thing, it'll probably be in uh, March where we can add the red screenings in some uh, sloped and uh, wet areas there. So Great, thank all, you. I know it's a concern process. That, that a couple of us have seen from a number of residents. Yeah, Great. just to piggyback on Bob, we had a really rough year with our staff last year. At one point, we were down, I think, 12 people. And just making sure that the basic services were getting done as far as trash collection and the roads were safe and everything, that took priority. But with the new staff numbers being back to where we need to be, we're hoping to get a lot of this work caught up over the next few months. Great. Thank you. Any both. other questions? Commissioner Norris, do I see you wanting to weigh in? No, I'm just appreciative of their work, particularly as... Uh, as you said, we've been hearing about the Tuckany Trail. Uh, you know what, Bob? Let me uh, um, ask one question. The the work that you just just described uh, will that be handled out of normal operating funds, there, or is that uh, a capital project? No, that's normal. It's normal operating funds. Okay, good. Just to piggyback on that a little bit, I did meet. Um, we where there, there are some areas uh, at the easternmost part of the trail down towards. Uh, almost ending up at Central Avenue. And I met Commissioner Brockington out there uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, we do want to, uh, we're gonna work a little bit extra extra on that area to really bring that into uh, 
bring it into shape. So we hope to do that. And again, um, we're almost done getting our leaves picked up in the uh, in the parks, the leaf cleanup and everything. So we'll be starting on that within the next few weeks. Great. Thank you for all your good work. Bob, Thank did you. did Commissioner Brockington actually bring a rake with him, or he expected <laughs> you to provide the, uh, the the implements? He had his gloves and uh, uh, his shovel with him, but he didn't have yeah, a rake. Yeah, I definitely did. <laughs> no, I, I I wanted to thank Bob. Take this time to thank Bob. And actually, Bo actually was riding by. He saw us out there. Um, we had a great meeting. Um, we have some great plans for the eastern por portion of the township, so it'll look really nice um, by summertime. I would think. As long as we can keep that staff there, I think that's what you've you got to have those bodies to be able to do that. So, Bob, thank you very much for reaching out to me um, to, to have that meeting. And I much appreciated um, your passion that you have. It shows. It shows. Sure. So thank right. you. Awesome. Thank you. So I'll move for the acceptance of the parks maintenance uh, report, Mr. President. All those in favor say aye. 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 Item D, January 2023, Code Administrator Report. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to. I'll do one more thing, uh, and I guess Al or, or Scott just wanted to ask some questions on um, the status of the Tyler campus, Brookview, and then two township line. Is that the uh, is that the Dunkin' Donuts? Yes. Okay. Um, so here they're asking they're asking for you know some variances and exceptions, et cetera, and they're getting cited for uh, trash and that kind of thing. It's just there's some incongruity there. But Scott, if you can, just catch us up on those because there are three important locations in the township. All right, so let's start with the Tyler uh, property. Um, Al continues to work with the owners out of New York um, and their representatives. Uh, I, I understand that they're <laughs> trying to do many different things there, but they are still re responsible to maintain the property in a safe and sanitary condition. Um, a lot of it's, yeah, 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 we're going to do it, we're going to do it, and then two weeks goes by and there's no action. So it went to citation to get their attention, and uh, there's been uh, some cooperation on that end. Um, number two, Township Blind Road to Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, again, with the trash and stuff like that, uh, they uh, they're they're starting to cooperate because they realize you know what their responsibility is once we thoroughly explain it to them in writing. Um, and what was the third property? Brookview. Service? Oh, Brookview. Oh, yes. So, um, Brookview. Just to bring all the other commissioners up to speed on that, um, we constantly are getting complaints from the neighbors on New Second Street regarding the trash uh, that blows from the property all over the place. Uh, so apparently now they have hired an additional maintenance person and they s police the area as much as they can. I have Al, Tom, and uh, our property uh, rental inspector, when they're driving by, if they see the trash, we send pictures to council because uh, the property management head person uh, in New York told us that we're picking on him and we need to talk to his council. Uh, they have adjusted the uh, lights, the complaint from our resident on Woodland Avenue. They have adjusted the lights uh, in that aspect and um, they still continue to have problems uh, with uh, their slow response, not only to the township, but to the residents. And we've explained that to council as well. And um, we also pretty much sent the entire property maintenance book to their council. So their council can't say, you didn't tell us. So we, we told them. Um, just uh, for all the commissioners, we've had issues there uh, after hours, whether it was a building and codes issue, property maintenance issue, or a fire, um, trying to get a hold of management or the maintenance after hours, it, it um, just didn't happen. Two, three hours later, we finally get a phone call back, and then it was two or three hours more before they got out there. Unacceptable. They're required to have they're required to have emergency personnel for after hours, and uh, they failed to comply with that. And we've uh, highlighted that and sent that to their council as well. Great. But um, I continue to kill them with kindness. I do. We'll see if the lawyer feels the same way. Um, 
any uh, uh, any other questions or comments on code administration report? So I'll move that that the January 2023 street and traffic light superintendent report and the January 2023 fleet superintendent report are all um, uh, reviewed and approved, Mr. President. All DC, those in favor DNF. say aye. 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 Item 2G, Shade Tree Advisory uh, Commission, January 9, 2023 meeting. Um, and the one thing I just raise or make the public aware of, um, one of the things that's been talked about on that parcel is the, the condition of the trees and uh, the township uh, arborist has indicated that there are significant issues with failing woodlands and it is acknowledged in the um, shade tree advisory commission report um, and so that concern I think needs to also be noted to the residents because that was one of the issues that people were expressing concern about on that property so I, I just note that that was something that We've continued to monitor from uh, from our professional staff uh, standpoint, and it's something that went before Shade Tree, and and they acknowledged that it was a concern and needed to be addressed as well. Any uh, additional questions or comments for Shade Tree? None being uh, indicated. So, Mr. President, move that that be accepted as well. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, item two H, the Environmental Advisory Council. Uh, the one issue that um, was raised and that's the single use plastic bags. There's still some questions coming out of EAC about the exemptions that are that were um, not uh, that were per permitted for restaurants. And I'd simply say that when we get to the final version, there may be some questions or comments that remain, I, I think at Shade Tree, both in their meeting and also in concerns expressed individually to a number of commissioners asked that that be reconsidered and, and the enforcement of that be a bit more stringent um, with the restaurant community. So I'm raising it because I think when we finally get to the, the public uh, uh, airing on it that we probably may have some additional uh, questions or additional um, revisions to that. Any additional? Um Commissioner, if I may, um, I believe since that seems that there's still some questions about the um, ordinance, I'm going to recommend that we take it, it off uh, the March agenda for consideration, have the EAC look at it at its meeting this month and bring it back to Public Works uh, for a final review before we advertise and, and have the board consider adoption. Thank you, uh, Township Manager Elliott. Okay. Um, so I'll move that uh, the EAC uh, minutes be accepted as well. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, uh, next item is three, old business. Is there any old business for public works? Going once, going twice, none being so. I'll close old business and move to uh, four, new business, uh, 4A, and I believe there's a physical deer management update report. I'm sorry, I don't have it available. Can somebody just summarize? Oh, there's Chris. Uh, if you want to just do a quick summary, Chris. Okay. Uh, so the season ended the 28th of uh, January. There were a total of 20 deer taken during the season. Three at Green Valley Road, one at Glenwood Park, two at the Rock Lane Open Space, and uh, 14 at uh, Ashbourne Meadows. Uh, there was a uh, 380 hours of, of uh, man hours spent hunting. Uh, we didn't hunt Parkview and we abandoned Gimbal uh, early on due to all the construction that was taking place. That just, just wasn't working. Uh, for the 2023 season that starts in September, uh, we have several things we want to consider if the commissioners would like us to continue to provide the service. We want to get out there early this year, uh, put tree stands in the most effective places. Consider some additional areas that can be safely hunted. Uh, remove some of the areas that didn't pan out at all this year. Uh, we'd like to formalize the group. And uh, one of the big things also was placing more effective signage, something more like yard signs rather than eight and a half by 11 and page protectors. Um, last week, I got an inquiry from Robin Kelly, the community manager for Ashbourne Meadows, uh, asking about the deer hunting that uh, some of the residents inquired about. Uh, I explained the program to her and agreed to attend uh, one of their uh, community events to assuage any uh, concerns and answer any questions. 
Uh, that's all I got. Does anybody have anything? Chris, ideally, uh, how many months in advance should we have it on the public works agenda so we get you reauthorized early so you can get working as early as needed in September? Yeah, uh, just just give me a month or two to, to catch my breath. I'll reach out to you guys early, maybe uh, let's say May or June, and just get things hammered out early this year. Okay. Mr. Any Chairman? questions or comments on the Deer Management Report? Commissioner Norris. Yes, uh, Chris, thanks Thanks for the good work you did. And we definitely want to get you out early next year so that uh, you so that the numbers can be back up to what they were in the past. Um, so just uh, uh, one uh, suggestion from me at this point, and that is uh, Coventry Park. Um, it had been on the list previously. It wasn't on the list this year. Uh, they, they're routinely, I cite deers, going from the Coventry Avenue, Coventry Park, corner crossing new second and it just is amazing to to see them crossing a highway like new second with all the traffic but uh it would be helpful if that was included okay yeah we'll, we'll work with you guys we'll get your feedback and we'll get this hammered out early Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. 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 we found all your other missing deer they've been going through our backyard on a regular <laughs> basis we see them eight ten at a time just walking up the yeah. block <laughs> well i ir ironically at about I don't know, about quarter to five this morning on my way to work. I almost whacked two of them right by the Ashbourne post office. I don't think that's in the in the current requirement, is it? <laughs> Mr. Chair? Yes. Hey, Mr. Chris, on your, before you start, you and I are going to discuss on Parkview to see. Okay. Um, you know, and then we'll probably end up meeting with some of the residents probably out there. Okay, um, that's fine. If, Whatever you need. Yeah, and if you meet with anyone over at... Um, Ashmore Meadows, please reach out to me because I, I would like to attend that meeting. I will, I'll, I'll I'd like to join no you problem. there too, or so okay. Chris, make sure you include me in that. We'll, we'll, we'll do. Thank you. Just Commissioner just a, Yeah, just a quick thank you to you and the whole team. Uh, we, we do appreciate the effort. You're welcome. No problem. I'm glad we could help out. So just one last input, uh, Chris. For the Ashbourne Meadows, can you include me also? That, that property <laughs> adjoins three of our wards, so thank you. Okay, yeah. I, I'll make sure all you guys know about it. Hey, and like hey, I said, if you're missing any, Chris, just check my backyard. <laughs> I, I, I will, Brad. Okay. Hey, Chris, um, just for the record, um, can you let our residents know what happens to the deer, um, the whole process, and are you still donating the venison and things like that? I just want residents to know. Yeah, pro probably about half of the deer get donated. And the, the butcher that we use up in Bucks County said he could actually provide a report for us as to how many meals the deer provided to needy families. So I'll work on that for you. Yeah, that would be good. Thank you. So do we need to uh, approve this report? It's just mm -hmm. an update. So I'll yeah, we just, no, we don't. We're just accepting it. Okay. Uh, 4B, consider recommending the Board of Commission to approve a change order for Saravali Inc. in the amount of $89,444.16 for additional disposal costs, equipment and labor not included in the original contract for Chelton Hills Drive sinkhole repairs. And Bo, I know you gave us the detail. If you wanna just give the community a quick summation of that, uh, those additional costs, particularly with uh, the contaminated soil. Uh, yeah, it can the soil that's being excavated from the area, it, for the best way to describe it, it's burnt garbage from over a hundred years ago. There's all sorts of things that are being found within the soil. It can't be disposed of at a normal clean fill site. So it all has to be properly disposed of at a qualified facility. The facility is much further away. So the contractor incurs extra trucking cost and labor, and it's a lot more expensive to get rid of than regular clean fill is. Things seem to be getting stranger and stranger the further they deep, further they dig but uh, they're very close to being finished with the excavation. We're hoping to be done that by the end of next week, at which point demolition of the wall and reconstruction of the wall will start being done. Commissioner Bransky. Yeah, I, I'd like to make a motion that we rename the sinkhole the my pit. <laughs> Oddly enough, 27 feet down today, they took a bucket of soil out and it was loaded with seashells. So. Perfect. 
just gotten stranger and stranger the further they take down. That is Isha. That must have been from the old Yorktown Inn. They were doing dumping then. Who knows? <laughs> wow. Any other uh, questions on this? So, uh, call oh. a question to approve the uh, change order. Mr. I think Ann had a question, Mitch. Oh, I'm sorry. I, well, it didn't need to actually be before the change order. Um, do we have any up-to-date estimates on when uh, the project will be complete? Yeah, everything's going along very well. Uh, today, they actually exposed the wall of the culvert, just a small portion of it. But now we know exactly where we're at, and they can follow the culvert along, too. Sure, Sarah Valley did an excellent job with their surveying and their shoring plans there. They were very close. So they are expecting everything to be wrapped up minus a little bit of restoration work by the end of March. By the end of March, we're hoping to have Shelton Hills Drive open again. Thank you. All those in favor Any of approving. Yes, all those in favor Major, of approving right. the change order for Sarah Valley in the amount of 89,000 say aye. I am for C, recommend approval of the change order in the amount of $78.10 per cubic yard for soil remediation in and around the bridge abutment of Tokeny Creek Trail Phase 3 to ensure a stable base for the bridge and trail. There is an attachment. Um, and I guess, Allison, do you have somebody who can take that on? Sure. Um, I, before I turn it over to Matt from NV5, um, we'll also, he'll also address the second one, item D, um, for the drainage pipe. Um, both of these are for the trail. So, Yeah, hi. Good, good evening. Um, <laughs> um, so the contractor during the construction of the trail has encountered some clay soils, um, specifically in the portion of the trail that's approaching the bridge. Uh, on the Gimble Park side uh, of Tookenie Creek. And so this estimate they put together, they haven't been able to uncover all of the potential clay soil in that area. So um, they put together a, a unit cost based on the cubic yardage that they would encounter. So what this would consist of is them pulling that clay soil out of the ground, hauling it away um, to a proper disposal site, and then bringing in um, a granular fill into that space so it, um, the trail can have a pro proper um, compaction and be built upon a proper base. And, and from what I understand, the number there is the worst case scenario for, um, for this project. That's correct. Okay. Any additional questions or comments on that one? So I'm going to move for, uh, for us to put the two items together. Both uh, C for the approval of the change order uh, in the amount of 7810 per cubic yard, and then D approval of a change order in the amount of 16,748.45 to install a drainage pipe on the Tokenay Creek Trail uh, phase three, because in fact, those are two related activities. I assume under you know your purview, and is it uh, NV5, Matt? Correct, yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, so this- I, I see a couple of hands raised. Uh, Commissioner uh, Arman, you first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ludwig, just just a quick question. Um, uh, and and I think my question is more uh, geared towards the soil remediation uh, change order. Uh, I, when I'm looking at the the background materials, it looks like there may be multiple options here. And I was wondering if maybe I'm misunderstanding or if in fact there are multiple options. And if you could sort of walk through those for us. Uh, what, what they've done is they've put together an itemized set of the materials that are needed, both the materials and the labor and the equipment that will be needed on that. So, so I'm seeing um, proposed change order summary. And it looks like 1A is for $88,000 and 1B is for $31,000. Is that... It, it, does that translate um, to the, you know, whatever it is here, the um, $78.10 per cubic yard? Right. So th that's correct. Yes. And as Allison said, this would be the worst case scenario. This was the high end estimate just based on the observations that they've had in the field. We hope it doesn't go this high. Um, so they've broken that down into two different areas. Um, in one area, 
Um, the letter, the, the PCO um, number 1B, that is in the area um, nearest to the abutment on the gimbal field side of the trail. So there's, there's what class three excavation is considered is excavation for the structural abutment. And then um, the PCO number 1A that's above that, um, that class one excavation is for the, the trail path itself. So they've just broken it out into two different separate classifications. So is that sort of the number we're looking at then? Yeah, $110,000? $100, that, that would be the worst case scenario. Allison, is that part of the, uh, or is, is that above and beyond the award and the grants that we received on, for, for that, uh, for the whole trail? And, and was that in the consideration for that at this point? It is above and beyond. Um, so it'll just increase the township's contribution to the project. Um, we do have two other uh, grant sources that are helping to offset the cost. Um, so the township's contribution overall is um, fairly small um, out of the, I think it's a proposed $1.25 million project. Um, and I believe the township's contribution is about $300,000. So it could be another $100,000 on top of that. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Rappaport, did I see your hand raised on that? Yes, you did. Thank you. Um, you mentioned, I think, uh, the removal of the clay soils. And I'm just wondering where they're going uh, and if there's any use in the township uh, for them. Uh, you know, there are lots of other places to put it. The question is, could it be of any value uh, for any other projects or, um, I don't know, flood, flood uh, building up of areas uh, that we would need some other kind of soil adjunct. Um, I, I'm not aware of any. Um, Bo, do you have any use for soil in the public works department? I mean, if it's clean soil, we could take a couple loads and store it at uh, the Waverly Road compost facility for use when we have washouts and things like that. But as far as a bulk amount of it, no, we don't have any needs right now. Well, I, I just, it, you know, it'd be a shame to waste something that might have some use in the next couple of years. So just throwing that out there. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this? Okay, so um, I guess that finishes the discussion. So I'll recommend uh, approval of these two change orders. Uh, I don't believe we voted on it yet for the, uh, for both the soil remediation and the installation of the drainage pipe. Uh, move to question, Mr. President. All those in favor of recommending both of these change orders say aye. 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 aye to me, uh, discussion on engaging McMahon Associates for the following projects. Perform all necessary engineering drawings and submission to PennDOT to relocate the pedestrian signal on the corner of New 2nd Street and Sunnybrook Avenue. The signal pole has been knocked down and replaced multiple times over the past two years. Um, do we have any, Joe, is that in your domain? That is correct, Commissioner. Um, I, I spoke, talked to Bo about this. Uh, I got called out again, um, I think it was Monday? No, end of last week. Um, as far as that signal got knocked down again, uh, so far, I, in the past two years, it's probably been knocked down four or five times, and uh, all of them are usually hit and runs. My guess is by trucks trying to make the turn um, and hitting it, not either not realizing or just keep going. So it not only costs us money each time it gets knocked down um, for the materials to repair it and put it back up, but it's also time. Uh, the last repair took me about three hours. Uh, to go out there and, and replace it. So um, we're looking, since it continues to happen, we're looking to move that back off of the sidewalk and just behind the sidewalk, which that's why it would need an easement. It has to go through all the, you know, again, all the approvals from PennDOT to move it back to draw the uh, permit changes and things like that. So that's, uh, I did get a, uh, an estimate from them. 
it's about $7,900 to do all that work, uh, the engineering part of it, um, to get that moving. And it's going to take several months, uh, you know, as it usually does. And it wouldn't get moved. My guess is by the time we actually get it approved to get moved and get it moved, it'll probably get knocked down at least one more time. <laughs> oh. Commissioner we're going. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you addressed the issue of moving it because, uh, you know, I guess it's during turns that you're saying it gets knocked down. I guess my my other concern is, could we put a camera on it? And would it be in a, or not on it maybe, but near it so that it uh, somehow, so that we can really get, um, you know, get pictures of the folks who are uh, rushing through there and doing the damage. I mean, it, I'm sure there's something that could, you know, some type of a trail cam or something could be put out there. Um, but again, we'd have to maintain the batteries in that and continue to go out and check it. Um, Cause it well, wouldn't- Well, given how many good. times it's come down, it might well, be worth it. It might be a good investment. Yeah. And, and also and maybe it could be shared with uh, whatever patrol, police patrol, uh, should be going by there anyway on a routine basis. They're only going to see the result after the fact, though. Yeah, that's them. yeah, that yeah, and we I notified them a couple times when it came down just to get the police reports um, done. But you, it's usually called in by our public works guys early in the morning um, when they're first getting out on their route. So most of the time, I'm notified, you know, by nine o'clock in the morning uh, that the, that it was knocked down again. My concern is that, you know, it's going to fall in a car or something like that, that behind a vehicle, things like that, where there's going to be additional injuries or damage. So um, not just to save us time from continuing to put it up, but also uh, to help mitigate any future issues that may arise from that. Joe, is yes. this turn, is this signal uh, in any way related to uh, Stoppy at uh, ShopRite Home Depot? Which constantly uh, gets knocked off here also. No, but stop is a lot cheaper to replace than the signal is. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, well, I have yes, Commissioner Brock. Hey, hey Joe, um, you're saying that you think this is mostly done by trucks. Well, that's that's my guess. I, I know that definitely uh, one or two of them were done by trucks, uh, and one was about three and a half years ago, and there happened to be contractors working there and called me. And said, "Hey, a truck tried to turn and hit and knocked your sign down." Well, and then is this something that maybe we can go back to PennDOT and say, "Let's look at this street and maybe reduce truck traffic or the size of trucks." Well, I, them to I be think, I think the, street. the problem is that's a sharp turn there. If you're right. coming from Cheltenham Avenue and they want to go back to Cheltenham Avenue because they realize they went the wrong way, I think that's when it's happening. Because um, I've seen even when I was replacing it my truck almost getting hit by, you know, a truck realizing that they made a wrong turn and were trying to go back. And, it, you know, that's almost, you know, it's like a 110 degree turn for them with a truck and the back end of their truck swings. And, you know, by the time they, they don't realize it necessarily. So I mean, it's only for pedestrian signals, but still it, it just becomes a hassle. That's why I was wondering if maybe we can work with PennDOT to see maybe we should restrict trucks traffic on that street if possible just a thought yeah exactly. i mean the problem is you're coming off of um Cheltenham avenue um oak lane road and new second are going to be under penn dots purview right um, so you know we're i'm going to have mcmahon look at that um as they progress with the uh permit change okay thanks sir sure um, do we have a sense, Joe, what the what the budget might be for that project? Are they going to give us? Yeah, that? I'm sorry. Yeah, so they did just send me something late yesterday. That's why it's not out there for you to see. I will get that for your board of commissioners meeting, so you actually see the the uh, proposal. It's about seventy nine hundred dollars for them to do everything they need to do to get the uh, move approved by PennDOT. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then the second item is evaluation to how traffic is controlled at the intersection of Montgomery, Mill, and Surrey Road? Yeah, so this is going to be a much larger and uh, more extensive um, discussion, but I just wanted to uh, make you aware of it that we would like to um, start the process. We, 
as you know, that's an intersection where the signals are not in very good shape. The, the pole where the cabinet is is about 50% rusted through. And, you know, again, my, one of my big concerns is that coming down. Also, the pedestrian crossings are not, uh, there are basically no pedestrian signals at that intersection. But so we did, uh, I did have McMahon put together the project for approval by PennDOT. We went for a grant. Um, they came back from the grant and said, yeah, we don't see that there's any warrant to make the changes that you're requesting. Um, and we won't fund that. And they suggested we look at alternative ways to control traffic there. So I did have McMahon reach out to PennDOT and based on the amount of uh, vehicular traffic that goes through that intersection, it does not, by PennDOT standards, warrant a traffic signal. They went back on all of their records and could not find anything in their records that warranted that signal being put in at the time it was put in. Not to say that there wasn't something at the time, but they can't find it. Uh, it's basically, it, it's based on the amount of vehicles that travel through there on a daily basis. Now, there is a large, again, a large amount of vehicles that travel through there at the beginning of school, because the school's right there, and when they leave. But there's, that's two very short periods where you, you have a large amount, a large volume of vehicles. And you do have the crossing there for the school, but you have crossing guards to help cross those uh, students. So they have recommended that we look at alternative ways, um, which would be to possibly remove the signals, um, kind of change the curbing a little bit, possibly look at going all way stop signs, um, and which would then also allow us to better define the pedestrian crossing areas and actually make it safer, um, especially since there is a crossing guard during those times. And they would not, at this time, they would not um, look to approve any changes, even adding pedestrian signals to the intersection based on, again, the warrants uh, and the vehic vehicular counts that came up from our uh, study. So even though it's in close proximity to the school? That mm -hmm. is correct. Yep. Wow. Again, it's just, it's, even if you were to stand out there, there's very, there's really not that many cars. It's not like a, a high volume, like Church in New Second, or even Front and Nashbourne by those schools. Um, it's a back roads area. It's an odd intersection because you have three driveways that actually to the middle of the intersection. So that if you're going to upgrade the signals, those that would have been estimated to be one of the most well, the most expensive intersection upgrade that we would have undertaken in a township. Wow. So what exactly will be the output uh, from McMahon? So what they're, they're going to look at is alternatives such as um, removing the signals, doing stop signs in all directions. And again, that intersection, the way it is, coming down Montgomery, it's very wide there coming into that intersection, which, yep. which makes it very odd as to where the vehicles should be. So potentially, you know, narrowing the road by moving the curb out. And while there is no money or they would not approve any monies to do a traffic signal upgrade, um, according to McMahon, there is a potential for them to approve monies to help remove the signals and mm -hmm look at alternative ways so really uh that's amazing <laughs> yeah it, it's amazing um but it, you know we've actually talked about this at public works in the past and um you know that we're from my point and speaking with some other folks who have been here for a while and being out there quite a bit we're not opposed to looking at the alternatives and we don't really we don't feel that um it would cause any more harm or uh, any more risk, especially to students that may cross that. And it may actually improve that, um, you know, the, the crossings. That can be a very confusing intersection, just the way everything's laid out and the angles to yes. 
even tell which light that you're supposed to follow. I mean, sometimes you're looking at the wrong traffic light and you go right through it because you think you have the green, whereas the weird angle has the green for you. So yeah. I think the all way stop sign is definitely the favorable way of going in that intersection. Now, yeah, I, I agree with you, Bo. I, I, I go through that intersection practically every single day. And I agree with you that uh, when you're, when you're coming there, you, you can't tell which is the green and which is the red until you get closer to it. Um, Correct. So um, I'm not opposed to uh, uh, the stop signs if you guys think that's safer. Well, again, it's gonna it's it's not an overnight process. It's, it's, it's gonna be a lengthy process because there has to be some, evidently some community involvement with that. Yes. Um, with the removal that. of this traffic signals, you know, the suggestions would obviously come back to the commissioners. There would be discussion about that. Right. Um, I'm sure that I'm sure anytime you say you want to remove a signal, especially near a school, um, you know, the community would have a lot of questions. So we need to make sure that we can answer all of those um, and things like that. So, you know, it, it's not going to be something that would would be even be done in the next nine months. It, it's probably going to take three to six months really to evaluate it and come up with maybe one or two good scenarios you know, in directions to move outside of it being a signalized intersection. And we definitely want to permit time for community input, as you Correct. stated. Because I don't think PennDOT will even allow us to take it out without some community involvement. Okay. Is, so do we need just to ask, is it, is it premature to put it on the liaison uh, agenda with the school district? I think it is. I think that, you know, I think really what we need to do is evaluate it and, you know, come up with some good scenarios and then it can be discussed. I think just saying, hey, we're looking to take your signals out with no real direction that we're looking to go possibly. Um, I, I think that would get more people up in arms and, and, and worried and concerned about it. So I think, you know, that we should progress forward, let McMahon do some of their their background work and looking at everything and come up from there. Cause this, that intersection actually for them to design it, to do signals, that was the longest it, intersection for them to, to try to design. Um, and we went back and forth multiple times on how to, the best way to do it. So um, again, I think best ways if the, the commissioners are good with it, I'd like to, you know, talk to them and get them engaged as far as moving forward in that direction um to look at alternatives again not saying that it's absolutely going to happen but um trying to work with PennDOT and take their suggestions um to move forward do we want to bring that to next month's public works agenda just carry through or do we need to take it out? i will i will um i will keep you updated on it I, you know if i think there's action that needs to be taken um then i will you know let you know with uh, as part of the agenda otherwise uh if you'd like i can just keep, you know i'll keep it in my my report as an update okay thank you good um so we'll move on to item f which is update on the digital speed signs being installed on waverly road as part of the developer's obligation for the wawa construction yes yeah, so i did meet uh again with the contractors and PennDOT out there, I believe it was Thursday of last week, it was Thursday, Friday of last week, um, to locate the actual uh, signs where they are gonna go, um, that they are within the right of ways and on our property on the other side. So there was no easements needed. Uh, so they are, I believe they received all of the material on Friday of last week, and they're looking to have those installed within the next few weeks. And you want to also uh, on matter G. But before you go matter. on, Mr. Chair, before you go on, Mr. Chairman, can I just ask a quick I'm question? I'm sorry, Matt. Uh, yeah, go that, ahead. That, thank you, Joe. Thank you for that update. That's that's good news. That that's moving along. Um, it, uh, so, sort of um, unrelated but related. Um, the, the, there's some discussion about um, the crosswalk at Waverly and Lismore, and I was wondering. Um, if McMahon, if that's something that McMahon is working on, or um, have we delivered that to them to to start review on? Um, if and I, I could be wrong, but I believe at a 
previous meeting, it was uh, we were based on the cost that was given to um, do anything uh, to do the full evaluation at that intersection. I was asked to hold off until after the new year and the commissioners would reevaluate that. So, I mean, if that's something that you want to do, I, I can, you know, engage them in that and, and have them start to move forward with it. Yeah, I, I wasn't part of that conversation. Um, so, so uh, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not sure why that would be, but um, uh, I mean, it, maybe we could talk about it offline and put it on a, uh, uh, a future agenda. How's that? That's fine. Yeah, I don't know if you still have, I, I can go back and dig up the estimated cost for them to do the full evaluation at that right. intersection. Um, I think it's in the budget, so we, it, should, it shouldn't be an issue, okay. but we could put it on the, uh, we could, that's, we, we I mean, could discuss yeah, again, it and if, figure if, out whether if it goes on. If want to move forward, then I, I can absolutely, you know, um, reach out to them and get them moving with that and all of the uh, other projects we've given them in the past month. So, sounds good. Thanks for that, Joe. Sure. Any other questions on on uh, item F? So we'll move to item G, which is part of the Stuckert section of <laughs> Public Works. Update on the traffic signal improvements for Lime Kiln Pike and Willow Grove Avenue and Church Road and Chelton Hills Drive. Yes. Uh, so the uh, McMahon had sent out the contracts to the con to the winning bidder. Um, they were reviewed by uh, our solicitor and. They sent that all back, all the paperwork that they were required to send back, and it was all signed. Um, and we returned their signed contract to them last Friday. And they're, then the uh, next steps will be meeting with PennDOT to do poll locations and then for them to start moving forward. My guess is the way the weather's been holding out, there's a possibility that they may start on those two projects within the next month, month and a half possibly. Um, to get the underground work done, um, I guess, especially since the weather has been holding out. Um, so that, you know, just understanding if the if the commissioners for those areas could just let, you know, whatever uh, communication you have with the residents or businesses, let them know um, that that work will be happening. You know, there will be some inconvenience as with all construction, um, but, uh, you know, traffic will still flow. Uh, through those areas, but there will be, you know, some increased congestion and increased traffic in those areas during that time. Commissioner Rappaport. All right. Well, on the Church Road and Shelton Hills Drive, just I don't think you want that work to proceed while the sinkhole is still being worked on. I mean, that that area is already somewhat problematic. And I would right. think if you disrupt that intersection before the sinkholes out of the way you really are tying things up no so, we, we're, we're just going to elongate how long that whole area gets uh construction in it but uh, no i the hope is that you know before they can start work we we are going to have pre-construction meetings and that they will start um with the lime kiln and willow grove um, yeah okay the, yeah i don't know how they're going to break their crews up if they're bringing in multiple crews or one crew to do you know both projects but that's what we're going to suggest to them is to start up there if, for whatever work they want to do. Thank you. Commissioner Arman. Yeah, thank you. And Joe, um, I assume when uh, work is actually going to be taking place, we'll, we'll make sure it gets put up on the website and blasted out in the regular uh, communication channels so that uh, folks can know and then we can certainly double down on those communications. Correct. Yeah, it, it will absolutely get put out on all of our social media. Great, thank you. Uh, dare I ask, are there any additional items for new business tonight for Public Works? Yes. Doesn't appear so, so we'll go now to item number five, citizens. Well, uh, Irv, I think, I think Irv, Irv was something. trying to interject. I, I missed you. I'm trying to get Irv, you keep, you're, there's a blurriness to your camera, so I didn't uh, see That's it. just I me. apologize. I'm blurry guy. I'm kind of a blurry guy. <laughs> um, this is actually for Bo. And, and for Bob, um, today I received a, a very lengthy email from a resident concerned about the trash um, littering along Tickney Creek Parkway. I don't know if this is something that your staff will normally do, kind of go through and clean up the litter. She, you know, she, she's very concerned about littering um, and Tickney Creek does get a lot, probably the township itself, 
we get a lot of people just throw stuff out. Um, I don't know how we can stop that. Um, do we have any no littering signs that we can put up? Um, she's concerned about, in some areas are on Ashbourne Meadows. She was concerned about um, that area along um, Ashbourne um, near the school. There's a lot of littering going on there. Um, does your staff stop and pick up and does like a walkthrough when it's like, you know, somewhere like Tiffany Creek Parkway with the littering? Yeah, Tuggany Creek Parkway is, it's a constant area with littering. I mean, it's a fight that we've been fighting as long as I can remember, 20 years now that we go in there every couple of months and just do full cleanups of everything. We also, as guys are available, have them walk the sides of the road with trash pickers and pick everything up. I believe there are no littering signs out there already. They're just totally ignored. So yeah. it's something that we will uh, get done sooner than later. I know that Kyle has it on his schedule to – get from Ashmead Road up to Cheltenham Ave done. That's normally done by the highway department. And then the parks department normally takes care of picking up all the litter from Ashmead Road down to Ashbourne Road. I'm assuming okay. that's the area you're talking about because that's where yeah. I've been doing a lot more yeah. Yeah. trash building up over the last couple of weeks. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, no other items for new business. So I'll move to citizens forum. Do we have any uh, citizens that want to raise an issue? I see Teresa Camerata's uh, artificial hand up there. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, good evening. Um, I have a, a question concerning uh, the continued inquiries and requests from neighbors that I keep getting about the potholes on 73 between Rice's Mill and Greenwood Avenue. I have given out Dave Jackson's number from PennDOT to a number of different people. I've called myself and I have us, uh, you know, called into public works regarding it. How are we gonna get those holes filled? Because it's getting really dangerous. One woman told me that she nearly, the car almost went off into the ditch because the potholes are so close to the edge of the road. And um, they just keep, I don't, I don't know, that spot just keeps getting wrecked. So, what am I supposed to tell neighbors at this point? Because I get inquiries every week and I've been giving out contact numbers and I have called public works regarding it. I would start by saying to tell the neighbors to call the main office of PennDOT because calling Dave Jackson is just going to his cell phone and what he's doing with the information from there is not, we don't know. Um, when it goes to the main office, it all gets recorded. We call the main office on a daily, every other day basis, myself and Kyle. Kyle sends emails. They blame the weather that they have other things going on right now, but we're just going to keep calling them until it finally gets done. If it gets to a certain point, I'll throw barricades on the end of the road and call KYW and tell them it's too dangerous <laughs> to travel, but we don't want it to get to that point. So it's not anything Township can fill? If it gets to that extremely dangerous point, we will go in there and fill the potholes. Um, we're trying to have PennDOT take care of their own responsibilities. But if it gets to that point where we're getting reports of flat tires and cars going off the road, we're not receiving the reports. We're just getting reports that there's a rough area of road there. But if it's we right on the incline. That people are mm -hmm. blowing tires and Mm -hmm. flying off the road from the police department, we will certainly go in there with our own material and ask PennDOT for reimbursement. Yeah, well, neighbors down in that area keep calling. So I just thought I would pass that along to you. Um, mm, Thank you. Chuck Whistler Thank you. is no longer there. He's the head of the department. And Dave is considered, Dave Jackson's considered head of the department at this point. Well, I think he's, I think Bo's given you a, a constructive way to do it to get it recorded and then uh, our follow through. So, you know, what if, if you're leaving messages for somebody who's going to ignore it, it seems mm -hmm. not to be uh, have a point. Yeah, he's very difficult to reach. Yeah. yeah. Thank um, you. The other, I, I had an, uh, the good news on Church Road is that the, uh, the speeding has significantly slowed down. And um, that's because of the bottom. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, due to the bottom. <laughs> no, actually, because of the signs and the lowering of the speed, and it's it's quite noticeable. And there's still, you know, rush hour periods where uh, it's it's still pretty quick. But 
but for the most part, um, it, it has slowed down. And there's been a lot of good feedback behind it. So thank you all for helping out with that. Um, I did have one more question, and that was regarding the digital sign and over by the Wawa along Waverly. Um, I have friends over that way, and they have asked me uh, what kind of signage was going to be put in. And uh, now that I hear Matt say that they're, you know, bring up the question about the crosswalk at Lismore, where will the digital sign be placed in relationship to the crosswalk? Will it be somewhere before Lismore or closer to the Wawa? There's two Lismore. digital signs that have to go up. They're okay. digital speed signs, which will flash the driver's uh, speed just as the temporary ones do that the police put up. But these okay. will be permanent. They will be uh, west of Lismore Avenue by the bridge um, between Lismore and Linwood, one on each side, one going up the hill, and one coming down the hill. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you very much. Thank okay. you, Teresa. Karen you. Hellstrom. Karen, you're muted. Karen, can you hear me now? Yeah, there we go. All right, maybe the camera will work now. No, the camera doesn't work. New computer problems. Um, while we're discussing potholes, have you been to the Elkins Park Library lately? There's this one big pothole right in the entrance, just saying. And also another complaint about the bumpiness on Washington Lane coming from Cheltenham Avenue and turning and next to the school, turning into Ashbourne. Just to add to your list, that's all. Yeah, we've notified PennDOT of that. Uh, that is something that they would have to mill out and repave to correct that problem. But it's another thing that we'll keep, keep informing PennDOT about. Well, it slows cars down, that's about it. But the, the library parking lot, I assume, is Cheltenham's problem. And that's kind of a mess right now. Not if it's on the road, because that's part of church. No, in the entrance, in right in front, not on the not on um, church, where the hey. where Elkins Park Library is. Is that yours? Bo, oh, is, is that something maybe you could check out and uh, report back? Yeah, we'll probably we can get that filled by tomorrow, at least with temporary patch, and then we'll look at the entire parking lot to see if anything permanent more is needed. But temporary patch, we'll Good. get that out there tomorrow. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Karen. Richard Kidd? Yes, I was just calling. I don't know if it's on the agenda, but I was wondering what the results were on the traffic study that was done on uh, Dixon Road. I'm sorry, would you repeat that? Which road? Dixon. Dixon, in the homes of Elkins Park. The traffic it goes between, between Spring and Washington Lane, Mitch. Yes. Okay. Was there a traffic study done? I believe there was. There were there were sensors put up a while back. That Mitch, that may be part of that 1900 Ashbourne. That may be yes. part of their traffic study, and I don't know that we've received that at this point. Okay. Okay. We'll look into that, Mr. Kidd. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, any other questions on citizens form anybody else allison i can't see everything so i believe that's it so i will uh make a motion for adjournment all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. thank you one and all thank you mr commissioner zigmundfeld <laughs>